Hello everyone and welcome to part three of this tutorial. Um, what we're going to be doing this, uh, this part is we're going to be managing the actual vegetation shader and getting that functioning properly. Okay, so to do that, um, we're going to have to basically create a vegetation shader. Uh, but to start, what we're going to need to do is launch up Stingray and uh, open up the, uh, or create the project. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into my templates. I'm going to grab the basic template. I'm going to go create. I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call this uh, tutorial uh, vegetation. Okay, and this tutorial will be found in the, uh, or this, this example will be found in your um, download files, so you can go ahead and grab it. Um, but if you want to just follow along like you have been, then you can just go ahead and create this, uh, this, this project yourself um, and just put it wherever you want. I'm going to put this one into my uh, directory of tutorial vegetation, and then I'm going to put it in this uh, vegetation tutorial project, and I'm going to hit OK and create. And that's going to go ahead and create my, uh, my actual project. And like I said, you'll be able to open this if you want to, or you can create your own and follow along. Okay. Um, all right. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is uh, go ahead and import our tree. Okay. So let's go into content models and let's create a new uh, thing in, in here. We're going to call it Elm tree or old or let's call it large Elm tree. So we're going to create a directory and it's going to be large elm tree okay so there we're going to have our folder large elm tree we're going to go into that folder we're going to go import and we're just going to grab that file from the art raw folder under game ready and we're going to grab this large elm tree uh, .fbx, okay so we're going to go ahead and hit open and now we can just import it okay this is going to take a moment because it's uh, a rather large file so um, i'm just going to pause until it's done loading Okay, so now that it's gone ahead and uh, completed its import, or actually it's still compiling a little bit, um, what we're going to want to do is go into our textures folder and grab the base color and the RMA, and the base color and the RMA, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be editing these in the texture editor. Okay, so let me just go ahead and open this. And once we have it open, what we're going to be doing is changing this to DXT5. Now, one thing you need to know about this RMA is that this is really not just an RMA, it's an RMAD, which includes the density file, okay? And you can use a density file or you can choose not to. In this case, I'm using a density file. Um, and what that basically is going to do is it's just going to be used for our leaves to allow translucency through it, okay? So this is actually an RMAD file. Okay, so just something to be aware of. We're using all four channels. So on this one, we also need to make sure that the alpha channel is used. Okay, so we're going to grab the RMA and we're going to grab the base color and the RMA and we're going to set all of these to DXT5. Okay, and um, that's going to go ahead and do what we need to do. Now we're going to go ahead and save and refresh all. And that's pretty much all we need to do in there. Okay, so now that this thing has been imported, let's go ahead and grab our tree unit and let's just drag that onto screen, okay? And if we, we can go ahead and delete this orange guy and select this and just set this to zero, zero, zero. Okay, now, um, as you'll notice, the tree is um, not looking so good yet, right? Like it's got some kind of problems. You know what, let's go ahead and hide this, uh, this ball too by pressing the H key. Um, okay, so here's our tree and it's kind of looking anemic, right? Like we're not seeing these leaves up on top, so we know we're going to have to have a double-sided material. The leaves are not in motion yet, right? So that's a, a big problem. Um, and uh, there's really no light coming through these leaves, which is what we really want. We want to kind of have this little bit of a glow because leaves kind of grab light and then spread it out on their, their surfaces. And we want to emulate that as well, okay? So we're going to be doing a couple things with the shader and therefore the shader is going to be relatively complex, okay? So um, let's go ahead and get into that shader now. So let's go into our content folder. And as you can see here, we already have our shaders folder because when we imported, we had this RMA, okay? So um, we're not gonna really use the RMA for our leaves. We're gonna be creating a new shader. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go create, and we're gonna go create empty uh, material. So material empty, okay? And that's just gonna give us a blank uh, slate to work from. And what we're gonna call this is um, vegetation, uh, R M A D for the um, 
you know, the fact that we're using an RMA style material for this. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And that's gonna be all we need to do here. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the shader graph and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to see is the standard base. Let's go ahead and delete that and recreate it. Sometimes the uh, emissive doesn't work if we don't recreate it. So let's just make sure we're recreating it. And let's go um, output and standard base. Okay, so there we go. All right, now, um, in order to, to, to get our vegetation moving, the first thing we're going to need to do is use the vegetation animation. So we're going to go add and we're going to go animation and we're going to go vegetation animation okay so there we go now this is going to control all of our position offsets so we're just going to plug that right into position offsets and you'll notice that we're already getting a red um problem right like it's, a, it's an issue that there's no inputs coming into this so it's saying this node really needs some inputs okay so um let's go ahead and start adding those now the first things that we're going to need is this vertex position and vertex color um, the vertex color we're going to be reading from the Maya file that we created in step one or t tutorial one, where we were, you know, creating those those colors to be able to control the vertex positions. Okay, so we're going to start with getting this guy. So we're going to go right click, add, vertex inputs, color zero. This will read whatever our colors are from our vertexes. Okay, and we're going to plug that right into our vertex color. Now the vertex position is really straightforward we're just going to go add vertex inputs and position okay and this is just going to know the position of the vertexes okay and that's all we need for that okay these are pretty easy to do and we can just kind of slide these closer and maybe up a little bit because we're going to have a lot of stuff coming in here um, the next thing we're going to need is this world normal so let's go ahead and add that add vertex inputs and world normal okay and that's going to give us our world normal and we're just going to plug that into there as well Okay, so these guys are really easy. And for time, all we're gonna do is go right click, add, input, and time. Okay, and that's gonna feed our time into this equation. Okay, so this is all kind of like the pre prerequisites of our vegetation animation. Okay, now speed, we're gonna wanna be able to control our uh, bend amplitude and detail amplitude. We're gonna wanna control those. Um, and you'll notice that these guys here are actually, um, vector twos so what we're going to want to do is split these up so we can have it nice and easy for us to work with okay so um let's go ahead and enter our time i mean first let's enter our speed so we're going to go add input material variable now um because we want to be able to see what's going on with that material variable let's go ahead and um let's go ahead and take a look at that so i'm just going to go ahead and maximize this and I'm going to dock this up in the top here so that I can see my property editor as well as my um, shader graph. Okay, so if I select material variable now, we'll see that I have controls over here to adjust this material variable. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is set this to a scalar value and we're going to call this uh, speed. Okay, and we're going to do that for all of them. And the last part is always lowercase because this is actually going to be used as a variable um, if we want to at any point. So I always want to make sure that that last one is all lowercase and using underscores um, in any case that I create a, a material variable, right? Um, and I'm just going to plug this into speed, okay? So there we have it. Now, um, for uh, blend amplitude, or bend amplitude and frequency, we can see that there's actually two values being set here. So it's looking for a vector two. Now we can make that easier for us to work with by doing uh, a little extra work here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go construct and construct vector two. And that'll allow us to put two scalar inputs into our vector two. And that will combine to create a vector two. Now, um, as we can see, we need to put those inputs there. So let's go ahead and do it again. Add input material variable. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it. Now, because I know I'm gonna need exactly the same thing for this detail amplitude, let's go ahead and copy this whole group again. Actually, let's connect it first. Let's set these to scalar and to scalar. And let's connect these guys. So connect and connect, okay? So now that we know that we have that done, we can just copy this whole thing and paste it again. And now we can connect up 
here, okay, for our detail. Now all we have to do is just name everything appropriately and we're in pretty much uh, good shape, all right? Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So this first one is gonna be our bend amplitude. So let's go ahead and call it bend amplitude. And we're gonna copy that. Oops, click the wrong node. Okay, so let's copy that and paste it. And down here, it's gonna be the same thing, but with the underscore. So bend underscore amplitude. Okay. And now we're gonna do the same thing for this next one. So bend frequency. Bend frequency. And bend underscore frequency. Okay, so that's done now. And let's do our details now. So detail uh, amplitude. Oops, I left the space out of there. Detail amplitude. And detail underscore amplitude. All right. Um, lastly, we just want to do our detail frequency now. Detail frequency and detail frequency, underscore frequency. Okay, so that's done now. Um, now, because I personally like to work with sliders over the standard rollers, like these rollers are kind of frustrating for me. Um, I like to make everything into um, uh, basically a number slider, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our speed, our amplitude, our frequency, our amplitude and our frequency, and we're just gonna make all of these number sliders, okay? And that'll make it nice and easy for us to work with. Okay, so this is all we technically need to make our leaves move, okay? But we have no color, we have no inputs coming in for the rest of our shading, okay? So we're gonna need to do that next. But before we do that, let's go ahead and group all this. So we're gonna say group, and let's call this uh, vegetation movement. Now, this is what we're gonna do for any shader. So even if, well, not any shader, any vegetation shader, we're gonna need this setup, okay? So just bear in mind that if you're not gonna use an RMA style shader and you're just gonna use standard shader like you would find in the uh, editor by default, you can go ahead and just do this part and connect this to your standard base, everything will work fine, okay? Um, you'll be in great shape. Uh, but because I use an RMA shader, I'm gonna go ahead and create out uh, a nice proper RMA shader that we can use uh, for the standard base. And um, it'll just make it a lot nicer uh, and more efficient than the standard material. So I try not to ever use the standard material because it's technically kind of inefficient. Um, it has a lot of nodes and is not really the fastest uh, working system. Okay, so um, with that set aside, let's go ahead and start this. Uh, what we're gonna need first is some major inputs. So we're gonna need our samples. So we're gonna go add, uh, sampling, and we're gonna go sample texture, okay? And we're gonna need four of these, okay? One for the color map, one for um, the, no I'm sorry, we're only gonna need three. Sample, uh, the normal map, the color map, and the RMA map, okay? Or in this case, it's gonna be an RMAD map. Okay, so um, here we're gonna grab our sample texture and we're gonna call it color. And we're gonna do the same thing as always, color and color. Okay, and now we're gonna do the next for normal. So normal, normal, and normal. Okay, so there's normals. And the last one is gonna be our RMAD map, RMAD for density, right? So roughness, metallic, ambient, density. That's what we've got in here, RMAD, and lastly, RMAD, RMAD. Okay, so there's our uh, maps and they're all set up and they're ready to go. Um, now for these to work, we need to have them connected to a texture coordinate. So let's go ahead and add our texture coordinate. So utility, uh, I'm sorry, it's actually vertex uh, inputs, 
text cord, text cord zero. Okay, and we're just gonna connect these directly to each of these uh, UVs. Okay, so that's gonna be our UV input. And this is reading from text cord zero, which is uh, the, the, basically the first uh, UV layout that you have in your, um, in your Maya file, okay? So now, what we wanna do is give a little control to our color. Uh, if we were to just connect the color, we, we could do it, but we wouldn't really have a lot of control. And I like to have a little more control on something like trees because getting the colors just right can be a little tricky. Um, so what I generally do is I add my color node and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a desaturation node, so utility desaturation, okay? And what this is going to allow me to do is desaturate it and make it uh, a little less, um, you know, colorful. So if I want to desaturate it, I can. Now, as we um, can see, we have an amount here. So we're going to want to go ahead and connect a, um, another material input for that amount. So let's go ahead and add input material variable. Let's set our type to scalar. Let's set our UI type, uh, our UI type to number slider. And let's go ahead and connect this to that. Now for our luminance, we're gonna wanna leave that at something like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So that we're not increasing or decreasing the amount of luminance. Um, and now what we wanna do is be able to have a slight bit of color adjustment. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a color adjustment now. And we're probably gonna need a little bit more room to the in this here. So let's go ahead and open up that spacing. And let's go ahead and add math multiply. Okay, so now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be multiplying this color against a color. Okay, so let's go ahead and add another material variable. Input material variable. This time we're gonna want a color out of it. So we're just gonna use this RGB but instead of using the UI type of default, we're gonna actually choose the color input. That'll give us a color swatch uh, when we look at our shader. So if we look here, we can see here, we have a material variable, which is this guy, and it's a color swatch, okay? So, um, so that's that. Now, if we notice this material variable isn't named yet, so let's go ahead and name it. We're gonna call this desaturation, and let's do that for all of them. Desaturation and desaturation. Okay, so now we have our desaturation, and we're going to want this one to be called color adjust. Color adjust and color underscore adjust. Okay, now we have that done we can go ahead and connect this to our base color, okay? So what this is gonna allow us to do is take our color map, right? We can desaturate it if we want, and we can adjust the color if we want, okay? So that's what that's basically allowing us, um, is that we can make it, you know, basically grayscale, and then we can increase a color to it, or we can mix colors if we just leave the color or desaturate it only a little bit, right? We can actually mix colors. So it's a very useful um, setup right here. Uh, because it allows us a pretty good amount of control over our coloration. Now, um, because we have the, uh, the alpha map uh, of our color, we're going to need to connect that as well. So let's go ahead and connect our opacity to this, but it's not going to use the red channel. Instead, it's going to use the alpha channel. So double click this purple line and let's put in the A channel. Okay, so that's going to give us the alpha channel. All right, and now we've got uh, the color basically set up. All right. So the next thing I like to do is create a little bit of emissive control because the bottom of the leaves can often become very dark and we don't really want that darkness. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of fake a little bit of glow underneath the leaves so that we get this kind of more um, genuine look of, of a leaf structure, okay? So in order to do that, we're gonna go add, math, multiply, and again, we're gonna go ahead and connect our output from all of this, right? So this RGB channel, we're gonna output from here to the multiply, okay? And you know what? I really wanna clean this up a touch, so let me go ahead and do that. I don't like when I have lines overlapping too much, and that's kind of the case that we have here. So we have this little crossover here, but that's not the end of the world. Okay, good. 
So um, now what we want to do is an emissive adjust. So let's go ahead and go add input and material variable. Okay, and we're going to call this emissive adjust. Okay, and emissive adjust. Oops, got a little apostrophe at the end. And lastly, it's going to be emissive adjust. Again, lowercase and with an underscore. All right, this type we're going to set to scalar and we're going to put it back to a number slider. Okay, and we can connect that to our multiply and connect our multiply to our emissive. Okay, so there we have our emissive channel being fed and we can kind of adjust that emissive just a little bit um, to kind of give us that undersided glow so that we can really make our, our tree feel alive, right? So um, lastly, uh, we're gonna connect our normal and that's easy, we're just gonna go straight to the normal. And our RMAD is relatively easy, but we're gonna need to do uh, a little bit of manipulation of the outputs, okay? So we're just gonna go from the uh, uh, RGBA, we're gonna connect to roughness, we're gonna connect it to metallic, and we're going to connect it to ambient occlusion. And these are all going to be direct connections. And the only difference is that we need to make sure that we're using the correct channel for each of these. So roughness is R, so R is red, so that's good. This one's going to be green. And this one is going to be blue. Okay, so we have RGB aligning with RMA. So that's that's good, that's what we want. Now the density, we're gonna to wanna to have a little adjustment capability with it. So let's go ahead and go add, math, multiply. Let's connect our RGBA. Let's go ahead and go add, input, material variable. Let's set this to a scalar and a slider. Let's set our um, node name to density adjust. Oops. Let's set our name to our display name to density adjust. And our name is going to be density underscore adjust. Okay, so that's going to basically do it there. Let's plug this into our multiply and connect that to our density, okay? Now, before we're done, we're gonna to need to select our standard base and we're gonna to need to set a few things in here. Uh, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is change this material type from default to translucent. And that's basically all we're gonna to have to do. Let's go ahead and give this a test and see how it looks. So hit save and we can pretty much close this. So let's close that tab and let's go back to our tree. Now, what we're gonna to wanna to do is tell our tree now to use those materials. So currently, if we grab our leaf material, it's using the RMA material that we had uh, applied in uh, Maya, but we don't wanna do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and select this parent resource and we're gonna go ahead and go vegetation. And we're gonna grab this vegetation RMAD that we just created, okay? And by selecting that, we should be pretty much good to go. We are gonna to have to fill in our properties. So let's go to textures and let's fill in the necessary pieces. So let's go the base color to the color, the normal to the normal, and the RMA to the RMA. Save it. Let's set our color adjust to white and we can see that we're already getting a little bit of love out of it, right? We're starting to feel that little glossiness and glow that we wanted to see. And we haven't even applied any glow to it yet, right? So this is just, uh, just because we're using a density style uh, material. Okay, let's do the same thing for our leaf two. So let's grab our leaf two material, go back into textures, make sure we have, uh, first of all, selected the parent resource. Let's connect the leaves to base color to the base color, the normals to the normals, the RMA to the RMA. Let's set our color adjust to white and we should be good to go. And we are.
Wonderful. Okay, so now let's go ahead and place our elm tree on screen. Actually, I think we already have. Yep, we have. And we can see that it's already starting to get a little bit better. Now, one thing I noticed is that we're still not seeing the undersides of the leaves. So what we're going to want to do is go ahead and uh, adjust one last parameter in our material. Okay. So if we select leaves material, because it is now pointing to the vegetation shader, we can just click this little button right here to go to the resource. Then we can double click on it. And we're immediately back at our, our standard base, I mean, our, our vegetation shader and we can select the standard base and here where it says face culling let's set that to none double-sided okay go ahead and save it close it and we should now feel like our tree is a lot more full and dense right and it is because we're now seeing the undersides of the leaves and those are not getting clipped okay so now what we're going to want to do is just go ahead and find the asset in the browser select the leaf material and let's go ahead and start adjusting some of these properties let's increase our speed let's increase our bend amplitude our bend frequency our detail amplitude and our detail frequency and we should start to see that our tree is going to start coming to life now i don't see much movement yet but let's go ahead and increase our speed some more i can definitely see that it's having an effect because as i move it it's moving right and there we go so with enough speed, we're getting some nice movement there. This is probably a bit over the top now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to reduce that a little bit. And we're probably going to want to do, reduce these amplitudes quite a bit. Um, generally speaking, you want to keep these amplitudes relatively low. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get some really wonky results. Instead, what you're going to want to do is play a little bit more with the frequency uh, to get the right feel that you're looking for. Okay, so now we're starting to get some nice movement in those leaves. Um, and this is for our first leaf set. So let's go ahead and do the same exact thing for our second leaf set. So we're going to go ahead and increase our speed, our amplitude. Uh, probably don't want to go that much. Increase the frequency, detail frequency, uh, amplitude, and detail frequency. Okay. So now our tree is starting to wiggle a little bit and feel a little bit alive. Let's uh, actually increase our detail amplitude a touch more and maybe even our bend amplitude and let's increase that that uh that speed a bit more yeah that's starting to feel nice so now our tree is really starting to come to life and we can hit save now um <clears throat> as i was saying we added this desaturation which allows us to desaturate the leaves if we want to we can make it fully white or we can kind of leave a little bit of a, a coloration. And this can be really useful when you're spawning them. You can randomly uh, set these the desaturation value so that you have a nice modeling of trees. So let's say you only have one tree and you want to replicate it throughout your scene. You can use uh, some flow to just simply adjust this desaturation value. Um, and you can get some really nice variation just from that uh, alone, right? Just, you know, set it to like, you know, zero to point 0.1 as a random variable and you'll get a nice little bit of variation to each one of your leaves. So very nice little, uh, little thing you can do there. Um, but we can also go ahead and adjust the color. We can add a little bit of red um, or make it a little bit more fall-like. And here you can see we can really nicely uh, adjust our coloration of our leaves. Okay, so um, just some nice little bonuses that we get out of doing the shader the way that I've showed you. Okay. So um, let's uh, reduce this amount. Let's go back to actually the original color. Let's go to white. And let's set our desaturation to off and just kind of keep it where it started. And now what we're going to want to do is just kind of get this looking really nice. So let's go ahead and increase our, um, our emissive adjust. And here you'll see that we're going to get a little bit of that underlying color to come up. So you can kind of just fine tune exactly how much uh, our light, you know, our, our trees leaves are going to glow a little bit, right? Um, and the other thing we can do is play with our density adjust uh, to see if we can get a little bit of a better value out of it. And that's looking pretty good to my eyes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play with this a little bit and get it tuned in just right. Uh, but that's basically what you need to know. Um, and from here, we can go ahead and do, you know, pretty much anything we want. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't want to waste your time while I fine tune this. Okay. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. 
and uh, thanks for watching. Um, part four, we're going to be going ahead and applying those blend shapes and making them move around how we want them to. Okay, so uh, see you then.